We're here at Bell Laboratories where I have Dr. Robert Wilson next to me and Dr. Arno Penzias who have just uh, been informed that they've received the 1978 Nobel Prize in Physics. What did you do? Well, we received the prize, as they said, for discovering the microwave background radiation. But the real question is, what does that mean? And skipping all of the intermediate steps, what's that, what that means is that we live in a uh, Big Bang type of universe, a universe with a specific origin beyond which we can't ask questions. Uh-huh. Could you uh, amplify on that at all, uh, Dr. Well, well, just to set the scale, uh, as mentioned earlier, uh, the Sun is a star. Our galaxy, the Milky Way, contains perhaps 100 billion stars. And that cloud of 100 billion stars is one tiny speck in the universe. And each of those tiny specks, and there are many of them, are flying apart at the result of this explosion that Bob had just mentioned. And if you turn time backwards, then it means if they're moving, say one is here and one is here, and they're moving like that, if we think what ha where, is they where are they coming from, we just turn it around, you know, make, make time play backwards, we find that there was a time when they were all in the same place. That instant in time, all the galaxies, all the matter of the universe was in one place, at that instant, it was given an outward velocity. Each part was somehow thrust away from every other part. And the energy of that outward thrust uh, is manifests itself in, in terms of heat. Just that the heat of an inside of an oven is hot. You can feel it. You put your hand in it. In that same way, there is this radiation. And that radiation expands with the rest of the universe. And as it expands, it cools. And that radiation, that remnant of that radiation, is here till the present day. It's a small amount, but it's everywhere. And this radiation was, in fact, what we found. Its spectral shape is such as to be that of a black body, which is unique in uh, outer space. There's nothing, there are, while there are many emissions of various kinds, none of them have that unique spectral shape that is predicted from this theory. And in fact, that's what we found. We confirmed the theory rather unexpectedly, I might add. When was it that you did that work? What years? Uh, I imagine it took several years to, uh, to actually do the work. Uh, this was done between 1963 and 65 or something like something that? Something like that, yes. that's right. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And um, what were you looking for when you originally started to look, if that's what you were doing? Well, I mentioned that our sun is a star in the Milky Way. And the, this cloud of stars contains not only stars, but contains a certain amount of gas as well. And some of this gas is very, very hot. And the electrons from that gas are very energetic, and they radiate. And we were looking 
for the radiation from those hot energetic electrons in the Milky Way. To distinguish that radiation from radiation uh, closer in, radiation, say, from the atmosphere or the ground or the solar system, was the function of our experiment. It turned out that there was an additional component of radiation which didn't come closer than the outer portions of the Milky Way, but it kept, in fact, we found came further away, that the universe itself beyond the Milky Way was radiating. That was the unexpected result. So we were looking for radiation from the Milky Way and, in fact, found radi radiation from beyond it. Dr. Wilson, can you, when you say uh, from beyond it, you look in a different direction, you look over it, or? Well, the unusual thing about this radiation is that it comes to us from all directions. The galactic radiation we were going to look for uh, would have been somewhat uh, changed in, with different directions because we're inside the galaxy and not exactly in the center. But in any case, the radiation we found was much more intense than the galactic radiation was expected to be from other measurements. So what we do, or what we did, was use an antenna whose properties are very good for this measurement. That is, it looks in the direction you point it, and it doesn't see radiation coming from other directions. So that it's, it's a kind of a narrow beam, like a telescope. Yeah, it's, it's not a really... Uh, as te radio telescopes go, it doesn't have a really narrow beam, but it doesn't have reception from all over, a little scattered reception. It's all concentrated in the same general direction, so that by measuring the amount of radiation coming out of that antenna, we then measure the radiation coming from the sky without contribution from the Earth. started uh, almost immediately working on the ECHO project in addition to the SESA satellite, the ECHO satellite project, in addition to my radio astronomy, combined the two. Uh, and uh, as soon as Bob came, things really took off. The two of us continued this, uh, have continued this uh, close and profitable association all these years.